I asked the organizer to change the topic of my uh, talk. Well, originally, I was just asked to talk about AI and programming. Then I asked to change it so that we talk, that I talk about AI and programming. It's like having a personal assistant who can read your mind, except it's actually useful. It's actually a bit tongue in the uh, cheek, but I'd like to uh, make it a bit interesting because what's happening is really very, very exciting. It's um, uh, to use AI in programming. Okay. So I must admit, the AI I work with is like having a mind-reading assistant that understands my every whim. It's as, I've, as I've discovered the secret to having a team member who can anticipate my needs and execute tasks flawlessly. This technology wizardry takes care of the nitty-gritty details, allowing me to focus on the grand tapestry of creativity. It's like having a personal genie granting me more time to express my imaginative brilliance. And uh, I just want to comment on this. Uh, some people would say it's not imaginative, but uh, imagining brilliance. I'm not imagining brilliance. It's I'm talking about uh, using my imagination uh, in the work that I do. Okay, so and today, I'm inviting you all to join me in this whimsical journey as we explore how AI can unleash our creative power, revolutionize the way we work with software. Let's embark on this magical adventure together. Let me go to slide two. Okay, what am I going to talk about today? Um, first, the current state of AI and software. It's like having a useful assistant who is in some respects very clever and in other respects very stupid. If used wisely, it's just an amazing tool to make the human programmer just significantly more effective and productive. It will give, I will give examples demonstrating how clever the AI is. I will give examples of how stupid it is. In short, it's like someone with lots of detailed knowledge but who does not understand the big picture. The long and short of the pitfall in AI and software is really two main points. If you expect the AI to replace everything, uh, then the human programmer can do, you're going to be laid down. Secondly, if you ignore AI and want to do programming without it, you will be left behind. To be effective and competitive, you have to embrace the te technology. In the near term, AI program in programming is likely to continue its rapid advancements. We can expect more intelligent code generation tools that understand contacts and developer intent, leading to increased productivity. Looking ahead, the long-term future of AI in programming is filled with possibilities and potential challenges. It's conceivable that AI could contribute to the creation of self-writing programs or generate entire software systems with minimal human intervention. However, ethical consideration and the need for human oversight and control will remain paramount. Striking a balance between human ingenuity and AI assistance will be crucial to ensure the development of secure, reliable, and ethical software systems. Okay. Let's talk about the current state of AI in programming. Um, think of alpha code of a proof of concept of what AI and programming can do, but it's not really useful for a programmer making a commercial uh, application. Then ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot are examples of AI that can support a human programmer and are often amazingly 
but oftentimes make stupid mistakes. DeepMind's Alpha Code is an AI system that can write computer programs at a competitive level. It can solve novel problems that require a combination of critical thinking, logic algorithm, coding, and natural language understanding. Alpha Code was evaluated on 10% of Code Forces contest that were newer than its training data. It achieved an estimated rank within the top 54% of participants. Making the first time an AI code generation system has reached a competitive level of performance in programming competitions. Code Forces is a project joining people interesting in and taking part in programming contests. These challenges are different from the sort of task a coder might face while making, say, a commercial app. They're more self-contained and require a wider knowledge of both algorithms and theoretical concepts in computer science. Think of them as very specialized puzzles that combine logic, maths, and coding expertise. ChatGPT is not primarily for assisting human programmers, but it certainly has amazing software skills to assist the programmer. For example, a human can specify what is required and then ask ChatGPT to write a program to do this. GitHub Copilot is specifically a tool to assist a human programmer. GitHub Copilot requires a paid subscription and is specifically targets professional programmers. Then I just want to read from the slide. Keep in mind that this is a subset. There are many more. But it prints three different classes of AI and software with the selected three, not necessarily a bad choice for each one of the three classes. The alpha code is a specific uh, generating code uh, programs on a competitive level, but not useful for commercial application. ChatGPT is a general uh, AI application that can also do coding. And GitHub Copilot is a example of a AI that specifically is, is uh, uh, developed for programmers. Okay, current state of AI in programming. Second. Uh, slide on this topic. Mm. I want to use an analogy of a gardener with a keen but imperfect helper. Expert human programmers can harness the power of AI tools to enhance their productivity and effectiveness explore the collaboration between human programmers and AI, and using the metaphor of the gardener and her assistant to illustrate how AI can be utilized to achieve remarkable results in the world of programming. The gardener's expertise and the keen helper limitations. Our gardener is a seasoned professional who possesses profound knowledge and experience. She knows exactly what needs to be done and how to execute tasks effectively. However, she occasionally falls victim of laziness, leading her to seek the assistance of a keen but imperfect helper. The helper, enthusiastic, um, often commits blunders that can ruin the garden. This mirrors AI tools used by human programmers, which while capable of executing tasks swiftly, may lack the nuanced understanding and context necessary for flawless execution tasks swiftly. The helper's mistakes highlight the limitations of AI and the potential challenges that programmers may encounter when relying solely on its capabilities. Supervision and collaboration. To ensure a fruitful outcome, the gardener must provide a clear instructions for her helper, offering detailed guidance 
on what needs to be accomplished. Similarly, expert human programmers should actively supervise and guide the AI tools they employ by explicitly communicating their goals, preferences, and requirements. Programmers can bridge a gap between human expertise and AI capabilities. Supervision and collaboration empower programmers to oversee the execution of complex programming tasks, allowing them to catch errors, rectify misunderstandings, optimize the overall process. The Gardner's active involvement highlights the importance of human programmers maintaining control and providing essential oversight to the AI tools, thereby mitigating potential pitfalls and enhancing final results. In this collaborative partnership, AI tools serves as a gardener's intelligent helper. AI algorithms possess tremendous computational power and can swiftly analyze vast amounts of data, identify patterns, and generate solutions. With the assistance, human programmers can expedite the work, automate repetitive tasks, and gain insights that may not be readily apparent to them. The gardener's keen helper, while prone to making mistakes, reflects the imperfect nature of AI. However, as a gardener, supervises a helper, correcting errors and offering guidance, the quality of the collaboration improves over time. Similarly, human programmers can enhance the capabilities of AI tools by refining and calibrating them through continuous learning and feedback. Symb the symbiotic relationship between human programmers and AI tools holds immense potential. As programmers communicate their desired outcomes and provide precise instructions, AI tools can assist in tasks such as code generation, debugging, and optimization. The collaboration allows programmers to focus on higher level tasks, such as architectural design, problem solving, and creative exploration, while the AI tools handle more mundane aspects of programming. The collaboration between human programmers and AI tools has the potential to revolutionize the field of programming. As AI technology continues to evolve, programmers can expect more sophisticated tools that can adapt to specific programming styles, understanding complex contexts, and provide intelligent suggestions. Moreover, the growing availability of large-scale pre-trained models, combined with a continuous improvement of AI algorithms, enables programmers to benefit from the collective knowledge and experience encapsulating within these models. By leveraging AI's vast capabilities and fine-tuning them with human expertise, programmers can embark on a journey of exploration and innovation that transcends individual capabilities. The metaphor of a gardener and a keen helper offers valuable insights into how human programmers can leverage AI tools to enhance effectiveness. By actively supervising and collaborating with AI, programmers can exploit its computational power while mitigating the limitations and potential pitfalls. Through effective communication, instruction, and oversight, human programmers can harness AI's potential to automate repetitive tasks expedite processes and gain valuable insights. As the collaboration between human programmers and AI tools matures, we enter a new era of programming where the collective power of human ingenuity and AI capabilities drive innovation, propels discovery, and shapes a future technology. Just as a gardener and her helper transform the garden into a flourishing masterpiece, human programmers and AI have the potential to create a harmonious symphony of code fostering a world where software development becomes increasingly effective, creative, and impactful. Let's move on. <clears throat> the pitfalls of 
AI in programming. In the ever-evolving world of programming, artificial intelligence has emerged as a powerful tool. However, like any other technology, comes with its fair share of pitfalls. While some may be tempted to dismiss AI due to these challenges, it's important to remember that staying in bed also has its drawbacks. After all, it's, life is full of missed opportunities. In this, we will explore the pitfalls of AI in programming, highlight the importance and of acknowledging them without shying away from the immense potential it offers. The first Significant pitfall is expecting too much. AI has raised our expectation to astronomical heights. We often fantasize about having personal AI assistant that can write flawless code, fix all bugs and predict future trends. However, it's crucial to remember that AI, despite its prowess, is not infallible. Expecting it to perform miracles without human intervention is like hoping to find a unicorn in your backyard. Embracing AI's capabilities while understanding its limitations is a key to utilizing potential effectively. But the main disadvantage of AI in programming is to not use it. It's like there are so many pitfalls out there in the world, I'm staying in bed. Just as venturing out into the world exposes us to countless pitfalls, refusing to embrace AI in programming is akin to staying in bed and missing out on life. It's true that pitfalls exist in the realm of AI, from biased algorithms and data privacy concerns. However, if we let fear consume us, we'll never experience the excitement of innovation and progress. Rather than hiding under the cover, it's essential to address these pitfalls head on, striving for responsible AI developments, levering, leveraging its benefits to enhance our programming capabilities. The, this part of the talk, I'm just going to go through a number of practical examples of uh, how to use AI in software. And um, I just want to ask the organizer, because I, uh, the previous speakers, I went a little bit over their time, so I started a bit late. But um, I think after we've done one or two of the, of the examples, the key message uh, that I wanted to convey is probably uh, conveyed, so you are welcome to, uh, to, to stop me short of my allocated time to yes, stay thank with you. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. You've uh, still got five minutes. Um, okay. uh, I think you yeah. should um, go ahead because these are the really interesting. Um, oh, fantastic. Fantastic. So let me, let me go on for five minutes and then... Uh, you can just prompt me and say that uh, you want to move on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So the, the first example is I used uh, ChatGPT. I asked ChatGPT, please write the HTML code for a simple web page that uses a form to be filled in by the user. That's a prompt to ChatGPT. And there it came back with the HTML code. I don't expect many of the audience to uh, understand HTML coding, but it is in there and in ChatGPT did that. But not only the, uh, the code, it also gave the explanation of the code. Uh, this is copied from the response of uh, the, the ChatGPT. In the code above, we have a basic HTML structure with a title and a heading, etc. I'm not going to go through the, the detailed description, but I mean, the, the coder can now look at the code and look at the description of the code. And then um, running it, it's a simple form, but 
looking at it as a web page and see there's a simple form with a name, email, and a message, and the submit button. So this was done entirely by the chat GPT, no intervention by me or any other programmer. Next example that I'm going to use is to use a Conway uh, Game of Life. Conway Game of Life is in a very important uh, um, initial example of the initial work in, in, in um, emergence of complexity, the complexity science. So this um, uh, Conway game, game of Life has some simple rules. It's just on a grid where any live cell with two or three live neighbors survives. Any dead cell with three live neighbors becomes a live cell. And then all other live cells die in the next generation. Similarly, all dead cells stay dead. So the, this is, these are the rules of the game. So it's very simple rules. Okay, so what I did was, this is just a Wikipedia entrance on Conway's Game of Life. I just want to play this one. You can see there on the screen there, that is on the, from the Wiki, Wikipedia game. It shows how the, the, the three simple rules that was uh, uh, given there, it um, generates this nice patterns. Okay, so I went to ChatGPT with a simple prompt. Please write a Python code to demonstrate Conway's Game of Life. So there it came up with the Python code completely on its own. I, I did not uh, contribute anything to this. It's a completely uh, generated by ChatGPT. Okay. And when I run this ChatGPT in Python, it comes up with that. So let me just play this video. So this is the result of the, the Python code that uh, ChatGPT generated based on that simple prompt. Example three, learn to program in Python. I prompted ChatGPT with, I want to learn to program in Python. Please explain basic programming using Python to me, and then give me the code of a simple Python program to me. So this is a prompt I gave to uh, ChatGPT. And then it came up with explaining simple Python programming, starting with variables and data types and control flow functions. Those are the very basics of any programming language. But in this specific case, it's using Python as, a, as an example, explaining it. And then it gave the simple programs um, how to implement those concepts in, uh, in Python. There's a control flow example. There's a functions example. And there's a simple example putting all the above together. And if you run that in Python, it works. The uh, second example, uh, the next example is uh, deep learning model building, training, and prediction. So, this is a fairly complex uh, task. So, I prompt ChatGPT with simple prompt. Okay, I do have a bit of uh, background in uh, deep learning model building. So, I, I had to be a bit, little bit more specific in my prompt, but still, I only prompted it with, please show me a very simple Python using H2O program of deep learning model building, training, and predicting using data that's available on the internet. So that was a prompt to ChatGPT. So it came up with the Python program. It came up with the URL of the 
the web page where you could find uh, the, the data for demonstrating the deep learning uh, model building and training. And see there, it uses an IRIS uh, data set. And I'll talk about this. Just say one thing about it. Okay, there was an answer of gave the program, but it also explained it. Certainly, here is a simple example, blah, blah, blah. Not going to go through ChatGPT's uh, full answer, but it gave the program and it also explained how the program works. But in the program, I saw it use it, use the, the IRIS data set. So I just asked it, please explain the IRIS data set. So it came up and it uh, gave me the explanation. It's flower. And in the flower, there's a data, a number of uh, samples with the sepal length and sepal width and petal length and petal width uh, of each specific sample of a flower is given. And then it's also given what type of iris it is. Uh, there's three classes, iris setosa, iris versicolor, and iris virginica. And down at the bottom, you can see the example of how the data set is laid out. It's a sepal length, uh, sepal width, petal length, petal width, and class. If we go on, there's just um, uh, photos of the different uh, uh, iris uh, types of irises and showing the petal and sepal. And I ran the, the, the uh, deep learning model training. This is, you can see at the bottom there, it went through a number of uh, iterations to build a model to be able to, to predict unknown samples of irises. Okay, just to go back when I uh, went to, to ChatGPT, ChatGPT came back with the answer. Uh, no, 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 sorry. Um, uh, I messed it out. The original program, it worked properly, but it just displayed the results on the screen. And I wanted to have a, uh, um, a copy so that I can look at the, the test data and the training data and the predictions on uh, uh, in Excel. And um, so I know that you're using CSV files to uh, read and write uh, data. So I just ask ChatGPT uh, um, to change the code so that I can um, look at it in Excel. Mr. Stenikop, I think we, no. we okay. stop okay. there. Good. Thank you very much indeed. That um, was fascinating. It um, shows us another use for chat GPT, which people wouldn't be um, aware of. And it is quite impressive that it can do that without error. But when you ask it to write something, it has errors in it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I, uh, you, you stopped me just in time because um, uh, it does make some significant programming errors as well. I started off with the success oh, stories. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, that, but that's quite fine that you stopped me beforehand. <laughs> so in the, in the, the follow-up examples, there were um, uh, cases where uh, ChatGPT just didn't understand the question properly and it made grave mistakes. So uh, right. it's, not, it's not coming up with good <laughs> answers all the time. Oh, I see. Right, right. That's quite important. Right. Um, so it the, the human intervention is very important and the human programmer remains very important absolutely 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 it's it's really allowing the humans to to focus on the tasks that is more creative right yes thank you very much um peter